Hello, I'm Tom, and I normally quite regularly make Ropey Reaper videos, but I haven't done so much recently because I've been trying to learn um, some C++ so I can make um, VST plugins with that. And it's proved to be a bit harder than I thought it would be. So if this is something you're interested in, um, what I would recommend doing to start with is um, just trying to do some plugins using the Jesus Sonic or JSFX plugins within Reaper. So you just do those using EEL2. And I've got a couple of um, videos showing how to get started with that, how to do a simple volume control with a GUI of that one, and then how to do a simple delay. Or if you have contacts, you might also want to try um, uh, doing some uh, contact instruments. So I've got a couple of tutorials on how to do that as well. And I've got some free contact instruments you can download. One just um, a normal sample based one, but also uh, one which is more like a wavetable synth. So it's not actually using any samples. It's using sources such as sine waves and then wavetables and filters to manipulate them. So that's a lot easier to get going with than um, C++ and Juice. But then once you get good at that, you can get do a lot more with it. But um, I haven't yet. So this is my uh, first attempt. So don't expect too much from it. But hopefully it's all working. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to use it for parallel distortion on drums. And then I'm going to try and automate it using both manual automation and which you put in yourself, but then also automating it rhythmically using LFOs, which can get some interesting effects and some interesting sounds. So if you want to see just an example of this on guitar, which is how you more normally use it, then I've got a video here, so check out this video. And you can download this from um, Dropbox, which I'll put in the description, if you want to try out the VST yourself. Okay, so I'll just get rid of this on here, because I'm not going to be using it on here. And I'll add in another track for the parallel distortion. OK, so what I do to start with is I just play a bit of the track, which I'm going to use, so you can, you can hear what it sounds like before I start messing about with it. OK, so what I need to do is just go from the roots here. I can just drag it over into here. So it's now being sent to this channel. Um, I'll turn this one down a bit because it'd be a bit... OK, that's, that's, that's all right now. And then um, what I'll do, probably want to turn this down a bit because it'll be too loud as well. And then I'll go into here, add in the Siberian hamster. And then I'll just play a bit and I'll just click through the preset so you can just get an idea. So this is being mixed down to lower volume than the normal drums. But some of it will sound fairly horrible. And then I'll try and adjust it to just give it a different flavour. OK, so what, I, what I'll try doing is I'll just play it a bit without it. I'll put this back to the normal volume, mute this, and then I'll show you the difference. And then I'll start showing you some automation. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so one thing you might have noticed is on the filter, I turned this all the way across, which helps bring out, um, get rid of some of the very high frequencies. So the distortion on the hi-hats and the cymbals can sound quite nasty. Um, what you could do, of course, is just have all separate tracks and only for the drums and then only apply the distortion on the actual drums themselves and not the cymbals and hi-hats. Or what also might help is because this is quite basic, the filter on this, is you could use a separate EQ to just cut out the frequencies on the higher ends, which are causing that um, on the distortion on, on, on the, on the high-end. Um, so um, what I'm going to do next is just show um, ways you can automate it. So if you click here on Trim, then you can see under Siberian Hamster that these ones and the preset as well, you can show up as automation lanes. So you can see them here. So what I'll just do as an example before I get on to do a bit more interesting stuff is I'll just use the volume. So if I right click on here, create new point, and then do another one here, create new point, and then I'll turn it up here. So you just hear it getting louder quite dramatically. So if you want to change the curves, you can always just do um, create different shapes here as well. But I'll just play this so you just hear this. And then you can also um, you can record the automation. So, so um, you can move it about on the knobs yourself and then it will record it as you're going. Or you can actually draw a curve, hold down the mouse and draw a curve. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to automate it using LFOs in a minute, but I'll just show you this first. <laughs> I just forgot to show it moving the volume, so I'll just I'll just show it on that. So you can just have a look at the volume when it's doing it. Have a look here. Okay, so it's going to move it back to the beginning bit again. So I'll move it back to here. And what I'll do is I'll just unselect all points here. Actually, it doesn't do it. So what I'll do, select all points and then delete. OK, so that's just cleared it back to how it is. OK, so what I'm going to do, the next stage on from this, is I'm going to use LFO automation. So I'll just double click, I'll just click the distortion as last clicked. So you go to param here. Um, go to parameter modulation MIDI link and then this will pop up. I'll move this over so you can see it better. Now what you want to do is click LFO and okay as soon as I click that you see that started to move that because it's the last one I did. Um, I want to center that so it's doing it more from side to side here okay and it's going a bit fast so I'm going to speed it, slow it down and also, what you can do to make it more rhythmical is if you click Tempo Sync, it will lock in to the BPM of the track. So there you go. You can see it moving now, and then that will be going at the same BPM in your door for the track. Um, you can change these so that you could do um, like different saw, different shapes. You could do um, triangle. You can do square, which is just jerks backwards and forwards. That's not so good. But I think sine is best, but I'll play a bit and then I'll change it on the other one so you can see it. OK, so what I'll do now is I'll play it and it all should rhythmically change the distortion on it.
Okay, so hopefully that's um, given you some ideas of things that you could try out yourself. Obviously, you could do any combination of things so that you could um, automate all the different buttons available and you could do different shapes on it and do different amounts, different speeds. And then you can add in your own automation as well on the volume and combine them. And obviously, you can get quite over the top of this and make it sound terrible. But if you use it subtly and maybe just bring it in on, say, a chorus or on a particular part of a song, that can add some extra... Um, color and uh, movements and an extra dimension to it which can be uh, quite interesting so yeah thanks for watching i've got um, plenty of other videos if you want to check them out and yeah i guess that's about it okay cheers bye